Hello, beautiful souls. Thank you for joining me today. I have another beautiful soul with me and uh, he is known as Tony. I'm going to let him introduce himself. Um, I refer to him as Esau. That's his soul name. I do tend to use soul names. That's why you'll see two names at the bottom of my screen. My earthly name is Nicole. I don't really resonate with that name very much anymore. So I go by Lucy and uh, that's my soul name. And I, we have been trying to get this chat recorded for a long time, <laughs> but he's busy. I'm busy. Things happen. We have to get our rest. And uh, anyway, thank you for joining me today. Give us a little intro about who you are and how did you get to this point in life? All right. Hi, guys. I'm Tony. Um, I'm uh, basically I, my past started about a little over six years ago now. Um, I'm a 100 percent disabled veteran. And I had an awakening after my second suicide attempt and divine intervention that uh, led to my awakening where I had vivid dreams and miraculous events. And I was yanked out of my body completely sober and wrapped in the unconditional love of God and had these deep realizations of what my path was to come. And it put me on a path working with healers and shamans and holistic doctors around the world, as well as psychics and channelers. So um, it's been a big and fast evolution for me to shed a lot of my programming and um, limiting beliefs. And uh, I've gone deep into the spirit realm with these plant medicines as well. So um, I share frequency, light and sound healing, as well as sacred plant medicine ceremonies for deep spiritual healing and remembering. That's a lot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So I, I'm going to link the YouTube video that you did that tells your story so beautifully. Um, it'll be in the description box of this video. So um, what do you think has changed for you in the last six months? Ooh, I definitely went through a lot of initiations. I'm not sure when we met. It was probably close to that, right? No, it hasn't even been two months. Really? It just <laughs> seems like it time's an illusion <laughs> so we we interacted with each other on x platform and uh you know frequency attracts frequency and i i do engage with people there that i come to find out our soul family and that was the situation with with esau and um everyone has you know there's multiple different ways to get through and and do your your ascension it doesn't have to look like mine or his or a combination of all of that you do what feels best right and so i learned a lot and i'm still learning there's so much to learn about the plant medicine journeys and all of those things and then um some of the things that are old hat to me as far as like energy clearing and crossing souls over and things like that he's like what say what say what <laughs> so uh so we have been collaborating uh taking what i do great and wonderful and what he does great and wonderful and and we've been helping other souls as well so it's only been a couple of months though but we do okay. so much in a in a like 24 hour earthly day that it seems like weeks go by and it's only been a day. Yeah. I can't, I, I'm so bad with timeline stuff. The last six months, um, I did my, my 37 hour I began on August on eight, eight, eight. And that was a really intense ceremony. Um, that was the most intense ceremony uh, and facing my deepest fears on a soul level and also the most expansive and amazing ceremony of my life, which I'll be oh. doing videos on. What is Ibogaine for those that don't know? So Ibogaine is out of Africa. It's uh, called a boga root bark. And um, typically it lasts 16 to 24 hours. And it's very clear, like IMAX theater living movie visions where you're in the first person. You can be in other lifetimes this life, your whole life review. Um, also third person and a combination of all angles so that you understand what you're perceiving. Um, and so I've gone through my life review. I've seen the interconnectedness of all the um, trauma I've endured and the karmic cycles with certain souls and their interweaving that is so 
divinely orchestrated that it's beyond like human conception of how it all works so perfectly. It's very humbling. Um, and then in that one, I actually saw the election stuff and it was pretty spot on with what I was shown. And then the, the new golden age that's to come, um, where mass wealth is going to be redistributed. And that happened in my first Ibogaine as well, before I had even done any research into the current event stuff. Like I was not into Q, I wasn't in investing. Um, and it showed me a lot of what is going on now then. So I'm excited for that. I don't know the timeline on that because <laughs> I saw it five years ago yeah. and I'm like, it's happening soon. <laughs> you know? Any moment. Yeah. And then it's like five years later. I'm like, all right, it's got to happen soon now. I know. Soon has become a four letter word for me yeah. because when anybody, my guides are like, it's, you know, soon I'm like, take it back, take it back right now. Right. I don't want to hear that four letter word on something else. It, ha it has lost all meaning and purpose in my life. Yeah. It's very hard to merge the two realities because soon to them could be a decade or longer yeah and then to us like we're expecting it next week so it's been it's been an adjustment because i'll get all excited and then it like i sound crazy because i'm telling all these people all this stuff and then now it's finally starting to come true so that's good but you can look back in my videos two years ago i was talking about uh qfs and the golden age of miracles and uh i started out helping people set up their stellar wallet their lobster wallet you know, and understanding what digital currency was. That's how I started out. It's like a hundred years ago. I'm telling you, it doesn't seem like just two, but yeah. again, I was looking at the soon <clears throat> back then and <laughs> here, here we are. <laughs> well, I think like, and then I, I talk about Noah and the ark and he, he was told about this flood, but like it took him 25 to 50 years to build the ark and he sounded crazy the whole time. And then it happened. So <laughs> all of a sudden you're not so crazy anymore right yeah i think like allowing these visions to come through and trusting the process and then i'm very impatient so patience has been one of my key lessons to kind of let go of trying to control and push things and um it's not easy for me to do that because like my awakening was so abrupt and then prior to that i wasn't spiritual hadn't looked in any of this and then it was like all the doors open and i was pushed through into these deep dives of expansion and so when it slowed down it was really hard for me um because i felt like i was doing something wrong or i wasn't on the right vibration or where am i blocking myself why is this like this and there's just times of rest and you have to trust that and just be present um and that's a big lesson i'm learning over and over again is presence and so like lately i've been doing a lot of breath work and um just laying there and focusing on the breath and the whole time and letting all my thoughts fade away and then getting in present within my body into the different pains. Cause I broke my back, blow up my shoulder. I have all sorts of pain in my body. And then I'm just breathing into these spaces. And instead of trying to understand or figure them out or push them out, I just sit with them and expand into that pain and then it dissolves. And it's been really cool to experience that. Yeah. I think we all as a culture struggle with, being just mm -hmm. being and and we we're kind of all taught you know like if you want this you got to work hard at it and it's the opposite if you really truly want something you have to allow the flow of the energy to bring it to you and that means that you've let the the desire go out into the universe and the universe has this big expansive idea of how things are going to come back to you and it looks nothing like your plan I don't care how many times you put it in a planner or how many times you have your vision, it's going to come to you in a more expansive way if you try to not micromanage it. But that's the culture of the people. Like they want to dot the I, cross the T, mark it off their list and go, okay, I'm done. Where is it? And, you know, yeah. and, and you have to be in the energy that allows that blessing to come back to you. And that's a, the breath work I have found is the, the, key piece for all those fairy lineage folks because they can't quiet their brain to meditate they can't quiet the the what ifs and the and the create the monkey mind mm -hmm. and so bringing it down to focusing on the breath and i mean like 
small chunks of time, 30 seconds. Focus on your breath for 30 seconds. Inhale for eight, hold it for eight, exhale for eight, like simple things like that. And, and I've seen it evolve into them realizing what actual peace feels like because they never really have peace people that are always constantly uh adhd in you know life and uh they they're never in a moment of calm and that breath work has been the key to show them like calmness can exist within your being even if it's for 30 seconds at a time and then you build upon that you know 45 seconds and 60 and whatever um so i think breath work is highly underutilized, but very, very important. Yes, it is. And I, I've gone through phases where I'm full on leaning into everything and getting outside of my comfort zone and having expansive breakthroughs. And then I think that due to some circumstances in, in my life where I was betrayed by a healer I was working with and all this stuff, it kind of set me backwards. And I went back into my cocoon in my comfort zone and then I was scared to kind of lean out into the world, even though I know better. Um, and so recently I, I did that event where I was given the the free entry and I didn't know I was going to be there. And you guys all kind of said, you need to go. So I was like, all right, I bought my ticket like last minute and then uh, ended up there. And it was this big, like $35 million mansion with a bunch of influencers and biohackers and stuff like that. And that's not really the I, I do more like personal one-on-one -on -one work and word of mouth and stuff like that. I'm very grounded, like um, not not surface level stuff. So for me, I'm wandering around and then I walk off to the side of the mansion and there's this guy that's standing there on his uh, massage table and then he starts working on someone. I'm like, I know that guy, like I've seen him. Um, and it was uh, Gary from Human Garage and they have over a million followers. I didn't know they were that big. I've just seen him come across my page. And I've done fascia work before where they kind of dig into the tissue. And I went to massage school. So I know the the amazing benefits of touch and moving that energy. Um, and so I was like, I got to get in line for this. And <laughs> he ended up working on me and they had me on the table. They're probably going to release the video at some point, but because um, they had to hold cameras and I was mic'd up and they're working on me and he's digging in my gut. And while well, they're pulling on my legs and arms. And then I just started crying and it was like releasing stuff that I had held on from my father who was very abusive and um, all of that. And then um, they, they did adjustments inside my mouth where like tears are just pouring out. And then um, when I stood up, it was like I was high and I was like learning how to walk again. And then they started working on my shoulders and it was all this. He's like telling me like I release all, all that I've carried for others because I'm a healer right and I don't realize how much I take on for other people and I feel like it's my duty to make sure that people get their healing and they move through these things and um so I was just crying a lot I didn't realize how much I carried and I also like released a lot of frustration and anger towards humanity <laughs> which is something that I think a lot of us have when we're on this path and you just see people that are just their own worst enemy and then uh, not living from love so it was a really powerful experience. And that was one of those things where with a little nudge from like my friends, you guys, and then uh, spirit, I was like, all right, I'll lean in. Let's see what happens. And I met him and another guy. So yeah, your human was not wanting you to go <laughs> down that path because um, of the growth, right? Because the more that we combine our, our energy, our energy body with the highest frequency, we're leaving the matter behind, you know, and, um, the, the brain, the ego is all about the matter. They want you to do what, what, what benefits you right now, the, the human. And we're all about leave that human alone. That human is not going to guide you where you need to go. Like this is a spiritual process. This is an energy process. And I know that you were probably like sensory overload in that environment i was looking at some oh, yeah. of the videos and i was like i would have gone the other direction too like that is way too much way too much and then yet yet the frequency pulled you right where you needed to be right you had related something about you weren't even sure what what your purpose for going was 
Right. Yeah, I wasn't. And then I immediately knew when we met and then I was waiting in line. I took all my like bracelets, everything off and just got barefoot on the grass and waited for my turn. And then um, right when he walks up to me, he looks me in the eyes and he's like, are you a grandmaster? I'm like, I don't know. What is that? And he's like, what's your birthday? And I tell him, he's like, yeah, you're a grandmaster. He's like, I need your information because I'm going to connect you with other people. And he's like, your first 30 years of your life were rough. I was like, I actually had my awakening a month before my 30th birthday after a suicide attempt. So yeah, it was pretty intense. And then he he just like spoke to my 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 body and my tissues as he's working on me. And he's a he's an amazing person. And then gave me his personal number, which um, was very humbling. Yeah. And uh, and then I met another guy named Shaman Omar who has studied under a lot of the different tribes and is a magician with ayahuasca and uh, that's his plant that he works with and so um he was very awesome and he's very like in, all about integrity with it, this work and doing it with purpose and um unfortunately the medicine space is also polluted with people that are in it for greed and ego and things like that so uh, i will be working with him and i made a lot of amazing contacts um as you know like i've been hiding i didn't i don't like the spotlight so i just recorded my story like not too long ago and um i want to start a podcast with a friend of mine named zen just to start sharing this wisdom because i'm very good at one-on-ones but right now a camera gets in my face i get all awkward and weird but you're not going to get better unless you do it so <laughs> yeah exactly alex who gave me the ticket to the event he's actually worked with a lot of these big names like aubrey marcus and people who are um well known in the spiritual and biohacking and he's trying to set up a system where we can help other authentic healers um essentially get their media going and and get their wisdom and voice heard and um that so is I'll be helping the, everyone that is the the hurdle you know for because like all industry there's good and bad there's good and bad and all and i know when i first uh started this it was source telling me start a youtube channel and deliver truth start a youtube channel and i was like i'm sorry you have the wrong number that's not my message <laughs> and source was like um now i know who i'm talking to this is absolutely your message and you're going to deliver truth as it comes to you in real time and i was like okay i never really wanted to be this person until I experienced the reward of actually connecting with people all across the world who, you know, send you a message and like, I don't even know where you came from, but everything you said resonated. And I'm like, it's the frequency, you know, pretty sure you're going to be a soul family member. And we were meant to connect and then allowing people the freedom that's full of space, uh, love, compassion, that they can grow into their own gifts and their own strength and their own ability. So I'm not, you're not telling someone how their, their journey is to look. You're saying, let's get rid of the junk. Let's detach from the things that have kept you away from your true power. And then you go and thrive. I mean, like that gives me like chills to even say it, but that's what we want. And there's so few of us, you know, there's so few of us that have that, that perspective where it's just contaminated with people that want to make a buck. They want to have fame. They want to have fortune. It's greed. It's all ego. It's false light. And you really, like I said, uh, sometime back when I first started discernment was just a word for me. I didn't know what practicing discernment felt like. And all you got to do is be in this life for about six weeks and you really understand what discernment is. Because if you're not using it, you're being attacked crazily from all different yeah. directions. So I'm so excited to hear that there are people that have been beneficial in, in getting their word out, their, their magic out, their energy out, and they're going to bring the good of our industry together. That's amazing. Yeah, I, I'm excited. They're actually building a house that's essentially going to have all these different technologies, frequency, light, and sound, and uh, stuff like that, and um, all in one place for like us to visit, 
and do videos with that and maybe promote those, but also do your own podcast there and then have the people in the building that can basically chop your video up that are aware of the spiritual journey, the the high, like the good content within that so that you have your social media, you shoot it, you leave with everything. And it's not us. Like I get so frustrated trying to oh. edit and do different things and chop things up. I know. Up. I'm like, I'm a one woman operation. Like there is yeah. no crew. There is no editor. Like I wear all those hats and I'm not all that great at any of it, but I just do my very, very best. And I'm like, IT dragons, can you come help a sister out? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the tech side's a lot. And then, I mean, you could do one 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 podcast like this and then clip it and then have posts you can do every couple days and, and things like that. And basically, his name's Alex and he's uh, from Russia, but he just was like, the, the best thing for us to do right now is to share our story and do content consistently and... Um, basically our story and how we got to where we are helps people connect with us because a lot of us have had really rough lives or we come from different industries that um, we found out we're not in our highest good or the highest good of others. And so we had our awakening. And so connecting with people through our own trauma and pain and showing people that it can be overcome and that these were actually blessings and lessons for us is, is big because a lot of people get stuck in the victim mentality. I was there um, and in their suffering and their stories and this won't let those go. So then they actually block their own healing. They can consciously say they want healing, but they're not truly willing to let go of those stories and the things that happened in order to move forward. So it's a delicate kind of dance with people and you can give people tools and show them the way, but you can't force anyone to heal. And your way is not always going to resonate with everyone, but those that resonate with you will find you. So, yeah. And I'm glad that, um, there is insight to all of that, you know, because my story resonates with certain people. Your story resonates with certain people. Like I said, there's many, many different ways to come to this healing journey that you, that is very individual. It's not, it's, there's no blueprint for it. And so I'm glad that there's a, a, a movement of energy beyond that, where we can spread that out because it's access to it. You know, um, when, when I started, there was pretty much everyone that I looked to at the time, because they were the loudest voices that they, they all ended up dark, you know, they were, they had like the, the movement of their channel and their presence was forefront. It was like in your face, but they weren't good energy and that needs to be swapped. Right. So the ones that are really taking advantage of, of folks, I want them to be shadow banned. I don't want, I don't want to be <laughs> shadow banned. <laughs> like, can we get somebody of the light that, that operates and runs all these platforms? That'd be awesome. But <laughs> Um, tell me about what's your biggest passion right now. I think my biggest passion right now is, uh, really getting back into my body because I've had so much trauma. I've done a lot of the spiritual work in the spiritual realm and now anchoring all of that wisdom back into my body and healing my body completely. Cause I've had flashes of it where I've been put on med beds and ceremony and I, I'm walking out of there with perfect posture, no pain, but I didn't anchor it in. Right. So there's, I'm doing this dance with, and I think it's just so I can teach others this, this, this process, but uh, leaning into the presence of being present within myself and then also trusting the universe because right now, like I didn't have the money to go to that event, but I threw it on a credit card I'm like, all right, universe, you got this. <laughs> and so I think that there's a lot of pieces coming together collectively for this big jump for the liberation of people from the slave system. And I think those of us that have been on this journey for a while are, are going to be big um, gateways for others to do the same because they're going to have that space um, to go within because they're not going to be slaving away with two, three jobs, barely making ends meet. And I think a lot of this is, I mean, if they're taking the poisons out of the food and, and big pharma is going down and then you have all that, there's going to be a lot of people seeking um, truth and to really begin to know who they are on a soul level. So 
Um, it's I'm like the sacred geometry of uh, everybody's, you know, track and path and all the petals that intersect and interweave. None of us could have come up with that. None of us could have planned that. You know, it's definitely divine. And, um, and it's beautiful when you, when you embrace that as, oh yeah, this trauma that occurred to me 20 years ago, it happened for me. So I could be who I am right now and recognize the gift of the trauma. And there are some that, that struggle with detaching from that or the abrasiveness of considering trauma a gift, you know, the, the oh, can't believe you said that kind of a thing, you know? Yeah. And, um, and I'm like, well, it's all about a matter of perspective. I'm not saying that it wasn't painful. I'm not saying that it, it didn't cause you discomfort, but that's when you grow and that's when you figure out who and what you're made of and that you're not just to be here in a loop of trauma and pain to play out over and over and over again, unless you choose that. So when I encounter someone and I clear them of, you know, 1150 implants and, and entities and things like that. And then they kind of get up and they just walk on out, out the door basically of the, of the session. And they're like, all right. And they don't want to maintain it. I'm like, but please, please maintain it. <laughs> this is going to, this is going to open so many doors for you. Don't let all this stuff come back and find you again, but it is a matter of free will choice. You can only do so much with someone before they take possession of it as this is for me to do too, you know, to put in the work as well. Yeah, the path requires a lot of courage and, and integrity and accountability. And um, you have to get out of the victim mentality no matter what has happened to you and and take accountability and say, okay, well, what was this teaching me? And how do I, how do I transmute this into a gift? And um, there's a really good book, two books that I've, I've been listening to that have really put that into perspective on how our souls kind of choose a lot of these different difficult situations for our own soul's evolution to return to unconditional love and be able to dance with that but i think it's called your soul's plan and by david schwartz and there's another one that i'm listening to and it just has me in tears all the time because i even though i've I've done a lot of work there's still points in time when i get frustrated i'm like can i have a break like <laughs> can i just get a little break like <laughs> give me give me a cracker over here um but I think that when you can change your perspective, it, it changes everything. And um, that's not always easy to do, but it, it does require a lot of work and effort and accountability. And then being an in integrity in your path and um, serving the highest good for all and leaving living from a heart centered space, you know? Yeah. It's so foreign from anything that we experience, you know, out there in the matrix and uh, people that are typically in your vortex are going to be in your vortex so that they can challenge you. They're, most of the people in your vortex that you know that you're super comfortable with are not really in your highest and best good. They're there to challenge you. They're there to give you opportunities to rise above that event, that relationship or whatever. It's karmic. It's not divine. And then you go out on your path, your journey to the divine, to the divine souls come and find you later on. And so that's why the first part of our life is just, you know, like confetti exploded and <laughs> we're just chasing all these bright, shiny things like, Oh, this is fun. Oh, this is fun. Oh, this looks good. You know? And that's like, um, making sure that we stay, uh, punching the clock and that we, take all of our time and give it away and take all of our power and give it away. And then they normalize that. They don't normalize having any moment to heal yourself. Whenever you go through trauma, they don't normalize really truly healing the body as energy. They just completely ignore that. It, you know, I worked as a nurse for more than 25 years in the ER. And if you didn't have a surgical problem or something that had a diagnosis code that they can throw a prescription at, they didn't have anything for you. And it's not that you didn't have anything going on. It's just that you're coming to a very narrow minded place for help. And if they can't cut it out of you or numb it with a drug, they can't help you. And so I saw a decade ago that there had to be a better way. Did I know what it was then? No, but I was slowly pulling myself out of that institutionalized thinking of Western medicine. 
and seeing that there was definitely more, you know, more ways to heal than just under a knife or by a prescription pad. Yeah, it's, uh, I've helped a lot of people heal and get off their meds, like using frequency medicine and rebalancing and reharmonizing things. And obviously the plant medicine ceremonies, I've seen miracles happen where they reverse that because they've addressed the emotions that were stuck in their subconscious. And we all have blind spots, which these medicines will expose for you to deal with. Um, and I think that we all need to remain humble students, no matter how far we are on our path, because the moment you think you know everything, then you've lost. <laughs> so and you're going to fall off a cliff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's um, like layers on layers. It's never yeah. ending. Yeah. So let's talk frequency for a minute, because uh, back when Source was in my ear telling me to start a YouTube channel, the other the caveat to that was, you know, I asked why, like, why do I have to be on YouTube? Like what, what's the purpose there? And, and the whole message was you share your frequency with your voice. You don't have to use the right words. You don't have to say all the right things. The frequency gets delivered and those that it is meant for will find you. And I, you know, the human ego in me was like, okay, sure. And then it happened. Every, every being that made a comment on my uh, videos, I was to ask if they were, you know, soul family, all the things. And I kid you not, nine out of 10 were. And I was like, how about that? I guess he, <laughs> you know, like, duh, of course, source is correct. But I'm like, huh, that's that frequency thing is really powerful. <laughs> and now I've seen it, you know, two, two and a half years in and, and the frequency mismatch is as uncomfortable for people in life as any other mismatch like if you're trying to wear a, a shirt that's really too small for you it's not very comfortable neither is being around people that are of a different frequency than you and you are it's like trying to get a message to someone and they're on the wrong channel of the the tv you know they're not going to receive mm -hmm. the message and so that's a big learning hurdle for some as well like stop trying to save other people in your vortex that number one are not interested and number two probably are karmic and not meant to be saved from their life and really focus on you so that you raise your frequency and then you can connect to those beings in your life that are meant to be a connection that's positive that's benevolent that's good it helps everybody grow instead of spinning your wheels with those people that are just going to give you frustration they're just going to give you heartache and pain so when you're delivering frequency, how does that work from your perspective? My path was like heavily directed to like Nikola Tesla and Rife and all these. So when I first went through my awakening, I was working with uh, a Christian healer that had a Rife machine and he had selenite crystals and he was doing muscle testing and pinpointing exactly the frequency the individual needed. And we were healing homeless and charging water. And so I saw the, the effects of that. And um, like we're taught that to take medications and supplements and this and that, but in reality, frequency is the most efficient track to aligning our body. Our body will still receive frequency just as it would a chemical messenger, but it would use it more efficiently. Um, so I've worked extensively with like, I had Rife machines. I had, uh, um, what are they called now? Brain farting quantum devices that can scan your field and energy and then deliver frequencies to reharmonize radionics devices um, that do that as well. And you can like scan land even and clear land. It'll pick up on all sorts of things. Um, and then microcurrent, um, which is works on the electrical system of the body. Uh, Dr. Carolyn McMacken, um, she's big in frequency. She wrote the book, The Resonance Effect. And she had inherited a device from the 1920s um, that came with these gloves. And she figured out working on her patients, like if she found the right frequencies, the gloves would heat up and their issue would go away. Sometimes mm -hmm. they need more sessions, but she was curing things that Western medicine deems incurable. And then Reif was doing the same. He was actually celebrated for the end of all disease. And then all of a sudden they buried his work and yeah. all of that. So um, I think it's a big... Uh, avenue for for holistic healing to implement now that doesn't take away the the emotional stuff that we also have to clear right so 
Um, my girlfriend works at a natural cancer clinic. She's also a nurse and left that field and then got into the holistic side of things. And the people that you see that do well um, are the ones who have a good perspective and mindset. And then the ones that are willing to go in and do the work on the emotional trauma that they're carrying. Yeah. Um, so everything's frequency and vibration. The colors we see are on a frequency scale. Sounds we're hearing, um, emotions that you feel are all frequencies. So um, these devices, and I shared Healy a lot, um, and I actually met a lot of my soul family through that device. And that one has over 10 million frequencies. It's out of Germany, and it's a portable wearable. Um, and then I scan the aura, and they'll pick up on trauma and blockages you picked up throughout your life or things that are passed down. A lot of healers will carry their uh, not their patients, but their clients stuff. And um, and then I can scan the body and mind systems and see which ones need support. Um, it's helped me tremendously with pain and then balancing out different systems and even fitness. Um, so, and then I work with a light device that's called the Ajna light. Um, and I can set it to different brainwave states and you lay under it with your eyes closed. And it's LED, but it flashes and you'll actually get like shamanic visions. You'll see sacred geometry colors and it activates the pineal gland. Um, and then obviously the power of sound is amazing. Um, yeah. So there's just, I, I've gone down so many different rabbit holes. I'm the type that throws myself into the fire to see what works and then report back like, hey, this worked for me. These are the tools that I like and enjoy um, that I got results from. And I think that in the spiritual journey, there's a lot of people who push fear and like religions and everything outside of that box. It's all covered in fear and you're you're working with demons and this and that. It's like you, God is not going to punish you for seeking truth and going and exploring these different tools. Um, and it's it's they also block their own healing and, and um, all of it. So, yeah, that fear based programming is thick with the with all religions i don't care which one it is that they're all man man-made edits to get you to be controllable to be of the fear and um and breaking free of that in itself is huge but staying free of it is even more important you know to do that as well um when people want to connect with you how how do you go about facilitating that um, I have a link tree that kind of has different things. I do free sessions with Healy. Um, I also have like, because I, I do one-on-one -on -one retreats or ceremonies and then small retreats so they could connect me with, I'll give you the link for my link tree. I also have other podcasts and information on frequency therapy and the healing, um, things like that. I am, I haven't even built my website yet. <laughs> so <laughs> it's the link tree. And then, uh, Soon I'm going to be starting a podcast as well. So that's awesome. Frequ Frequency Revolution. My my Instagram is AM for Anthony Michael and then Piazza, P I A Z Z A 22. I'm heavily shadow banned there. So the only one that Aren't I'm, I'm doing. <laughs> I've been shadow banned for like four years on, on Facebook and Instagram and people get warnings. Uh, the, the one that I actually share a lot on now is X and that's uh, Awakened Veteran 22. So. I've seen That's that platform really um, evolve over the last several months. And it's been a pleasant thing to watch because uh, I was guided to interact on X. Well, when it was Twitter, I was guided to interact there and it always felt yucky. It always felt like I was jumping into a, a cesspool, you know, um, so much darkness that was there and I don't feel that as much anymore. And, uh, I like the shift and those that are not meant to be there. I think that they're leaving cause they are feeling uncomfortable, which is exactly what happens with, uh, the people that are frequency mismatched in your life. Whenever they're really low and you're really high, they're like, Oh yeah, this is uncomfortable. This is very uncomfortable. I'm going to leave. And, uh, and I, I embrace that, you know, anybody that's out of frequency from me, I'm not going to be overtly trying to ex exchange my energy with them and all that, but the, there's this, this opportunity that we have to assist people. And I used to start when I, when I started out, I was very uncomfortable asking for an energy exchange for what I was doing because I had spent so much time in Western healthcare, um, healing, but also apologizing. I'm, I'm sorry, this, this IV is painful. I'm sorry. This medicine tastes bad. I'm sorry. This make, you know, doesn't make you feel good. 
And it was, I wanted to heal without causing harm. And then I'm like being pushed by my mentor and by mother Sophia to, you know, get an energy exchange that this has to be something that other people invest in as well. And I was really uncomfortable with it. And then, uh, I saw the effect of, of beings receiving energy from me to heal them, to clear them and all these things. And they didn't put anything up for it. So they had no investment in their own healing. And I've seen a direct correlation between those that I, I did for nothing. They gave nothing. They expected it like the magic wand effect. And those that mm -hmm. truly have invested in their own energy healing and their own path to whatever that's supposed to be, they understand there's a lot of energy exchange and they're willing to invest in themselves. And so most people have taken money that they wasted in their life on Starbucks or like whatever, and they put it back into themselves in a healthy, in a healthy format. So have you had that experience too, where even though it's maybe by donation or whatever, it ends up being nothing. And then they kind of go off the rails because they didn't really invest much. Yeah, I found that. And it's, it's really hard as a healer because I want like everyone to be able to have access to it. And it's like, for me, it was hard to charge and finding that, that balancing point where they're like, I, like if they don't invest in it, they're not going to take it serious and they're not going to apply it right. themselves. And it's kind of taken for granted. And then when you do invest, I've invested well over six figures in my own healing journey. Like it's my, the biggest thing for me is health and vitality and inner peace. And when you do that investment and you, you actually integrate these things, your life changes drastically and you open more doors. But when you're living in fear and lack and um, continuing those cycles, that's all you're going to get out of it. But I've seen a lot of, and I help those if spirit guides me to, if they can't afford it i'm not i'm okay with that um but then you have others that are es essentially limiting themselves and not willing to commit to the process of the healing um, which includes that investment because um nothing good is free in my, you know, yeah. But, yeah well i think too there has to be um they have to become immersed in their healing and to embody understanding, understanding that if, if I do this, it's not a guarantee because I have to put forth some effort, you know, um, we're not always a safety net for everybody's free will choices. And so, uh, I have adopted the, the, uh, policy where I'm going to help you out while you're learning, but once you have been given all the tools, all the skills and the support, um, because we don't just like kick you to the curb. Like I have rooms that you can go in for help. I have the website. I have a different type of space. Um, if, if you're not liking this, you can go here. Like you have options, but if you're just truly like, thanks for the energy clearing piece out. And then you come back six months later and you're like, completely full of stuff we start over, we start over and we have to start with the first question of what are you willing to do for yourself? You know, there has to be accountability for your own health and, um, doctors, uh, I think Western healthcare, they'll just keep taking your money, right? They'll just keep running your credit card. And they're like, yeah, you can keep not doing what you want. I'm just going to keep billing as much as I want. I don't want any part of that. I want no part of that. I want you to be as willing and invested in your health as I am in your health. And if you don't get there on your own free will choices, so be it. But I'm not going to be your safety net forever because that's how we get sick. That's how we get harmed. And, uh, and it's a, it is a fine balance. I want to help everyone, but I want them to help themselves too. Right. So yeah, they have to take those tools and apply them themselves. And I think that, um, as I progress on this path, I like working with you and doing the muscle testing and really seeing if it's in their highest and best good or my highest and best good to take them on. Um, if they are actually going to apply this wisdom and knowledge into all these tools or not, or am I wasting my time for a dollar, which I don't, I don't care about money. Right. So um, I'm here to no, help. It's those, the but... time that you put into someone, anyone, there's a lot of time and energy that 
you put into preparing, just preparing to help someone. And we all have our own preparation and, and it's not just like willy nilly, you know, there's a process there. And so uh, we value what we provide. I value what you provide, but some are, are really struggling with knowing their own value and knowing what their own worth is. And so it doesn't hit them the same. And so uh, there's times where you have to have a really frank conversation with people. Um, and at that point, free will choice sometimes says, you know, the ego is like, yeah, we don't need this. We just find on our own <laughs> and they end up worse for wear at the end of the day. But um, that is, that's the hurdles that we build and put in our own way, I think. And as being in the integral side of the energy healing industry, we have to be willing to have those tough conversations, I think, with people, you know, and, and spirit has said to me before, you know, like they're really, really important and they, they're not going to be able to pay you right now, but helping them today is going to pay off in the future. And I get right. that. And I'm like, no, no worries. Absolutely. No worries. And it has been that way. If, if I get, uh, now this is really is not in your highest and best good. I know that, you know, the 500 D chess player that source is knows the sacred geometry of this being is not bringing us together. It's pulling us apart. And so I just have to honor it and let it go. LFG, the whole situation, <laughs> <laughs> love, forgiveness, and gratitude. Not let, not let's F and go <laughs> <It's> uh, <a> different... <laughs> love, forgiveness, and gratitude. Yeah, I think. I mean, everyone, everyone's path is different and that's where I try to meet them where they're at. And then if I can't help them, I know I have other people that have different gifts and abilities. I have amazing friends like you and Philia and all these people that do like shamanic soul retrievals and different things, depending on where the individual is, what they need in that moment and what they're ready for, because not everyone's ready for a plant medicine ceremony because it's very intense. And, yeah. um, uh, I don't want to cause any further trauma right yeah. so you want to make sure that people are, are in the right space and then i i would send them like a pre-ceremony workbook to start to work on and how to set intentions and what you want to get out of this and what are the things that you're working through that you're aware of and like That's start good. to build that and then afterwards have the integration where you're daily journaling and going through the process of really anchoring in the the wisdom and knowledge that you've gained um, but I've, I mean, I've helped veterans and special forces and I've seen incredible transformations in a weekend when they have been suffering for decades. And yes. so, yeah, I think there's been, um, right off the top of my head, I can think of like five or six beings that everything that I knew to do fell short of what they needed. And it's all really comes back to like, even incarnated ancestral trauma that is so deep and locked in. And then it, it translates into control here and um, not being afraid to let go of things and that kind of stuff. And that's where I think what you offer opens up doors that in their consciousness that they're, they're just not able to do yet, but they need to have that, that, that door kicked open, but they do a certain amount of healing to get to that point. And, um, and that's really beautiful if, if you ask me, because there are definite things that are meant for beings that benefit more than the other, you know? And so to have this network, it's, it's really beautiful to offer the, the, the pizza pie to people. They're like, okay, if you don't like this slice, we've got this slice over here, you know, that <laughs> might, might do the pit, the, the trick. So um, I thank you so much for joining me today. I'm going to put of all course. his information in the description box, of this video, share it out share it with your friends, comment. If you're question, you have questions about anything that either of us provide and we'll be happy to get back in touch with you either way. I have my website, violetlotusenergy.com. And then, um, he will have his link tree where you can get in touch with him. He's always on X. Well, not always, but a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, yeah. So closing words for the collective. I think it all leads back to, to unconditional love and compassion for ourselves and others. And you really have to put in that work and, and um, go into acceptance and, and really apply yourself to integrate and 
lead with love and compassion and integrity and accountability and follow your inner guidance and intuition and, and really lead by example. So it starts with us. Yeah, it does. And, and most of the collective that I've encountered have no problem being loving and compassionate to other people. Mm -hmm. They have, they struggle with doing it for themselves. And mm -hmm. so I want you to really work on giving yourself mercy and grace and the opportunity to have permission to heal. And we're here for you if you decide so. Thanks for joining yeah. us today. I'll see you again next time. Much love.